Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, Attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care, and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning. Welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Hegwood, and our very special guest today is Becky Davis, and she's with Gentiva Hospice. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm super excited to have you on the show. <laughs> We're gonna have a good topic today that I think our listeners need to hear. And um, and so so this will be really good. And today we're gonna to be talking about grief support after a long dementia journey. And so you probably already know this, but we tell you know clients that coming in and listeners and things like that, that more and more people are getting diagnosed with some type of dementia. So we're seeing a lot of this occur. You know, and so and for people that have had this occur in their life, you know, we talk about, you know, family caregivers often put themselves, you know, kind of on the back burner. Do you think it kind of continues even after they've lost someone? I, I definitely do think that um, as caregivers for a loved one, we get very, very used to taking care of um, our loved one. Right. So they come first. It's, it's almost like um, a parent taking care of a child. We're taking care of our loved one and they always come first in everything, right? So um, we're tired. We lose sleep. Um, sometimes we have physical ailments that we don't always um, tend to because they go on that back burner for our loved one, right? Because if we're not there taking care of them, who's going to do it? And if we do give up that, you know, that control, are they going to do it correctly? Are they going to do it like we do it, right? And especially with those who have dementia, um, you know, you want, you want to have that consistency. Um, and so um, when we are taking care of our loved ones, um, we do put ourselves on the back burner. So it's almost like a learned behavior. So when that loved one passes away and when they're gone, we still have that learned behavior of, okay, let me make sure that everybody else is okay. Um, and, and we do, we put ourselves to the back burner. Um, so I definitely very much think that that continues, continues on even after um, of the, the death of a loved one. So for me, it was kind of a twofold um, because I was responsible for making sure my grandparents were taken care of. Some of it I did personally, some of it we hired caregivers. You know, the first thing occurred to me was I was sitting in the recliner and the kids were off running around. They were teenagers at the time. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I have nothing to do. <laughs> and I couldn't remember the last time I had nothing to do. And my first thought was, yay, I have nothing to do. And then it dawned on me why I didn't have anything to do. And I just started bawling. <laughs> yep. So I'm crying, you know. And so, but it took me, you know, I still kept kept running, 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 doing the things I was doing up to about four years afterwards before I finally hit my proverbial brick wall and went, oh, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I have to make a change. A, a lot of times when people, when people will come and they'll say, and, and if I ask somebody, what are your hobbies? They have no idea. Um, what what brings you joy? What brings you happiness? A lot of them will say, oh, my family or, you know, this or that. But they, they cannot tell me what it is that they love to do. They can't tell me. Maybe they used to crochet years ago, but they can't tell me that. And it, and it comes out months later. Oh, I used to love to crochet or, oh, I used to love to go and do this. But that loved one comes first in everything that they do that sometimes people almost lose part of their personality and lose part of themselves because they put themselves on that back burner and everything that they do re re revolves around their loved one. So that's very common. <laughs> so I had a client that told me that I said, you know, you're not, you're not taking advantage of enough caregiving services. So, you know, they're coming in four hours a week. You need more. Mm -hmm. What do you like to do? I, I don't know. I hadn't really done anything. I've worked and, you know, to, we just did stuff together. What do you, what would you like to do? You know, if you had, you know, if, if the universe opened up and said, you can do anything you want to do with me. He said, I'd like to learn to play a musical instrument. And he had a particular one in mind. I said, perfect. Mm -hmm. Hired the caregiver to come and go take lessons. <laughs> I said, you need that balance. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to have something. Four hours a week is not enough if we're mm -hmm. for 24 hour care. You've got to take more, mm -hmm. you know. So, whatever you got to do, I'm like, you go take lessons because I'm going to expect you to come in in six months and play a song for me because I'm going to want to hear it, you know. So, you have to do those things, you know. So, sometimes it's really just, you know, it, it is important to make sure that they're doing all the right things. And so, mm -hmm. we try really hard in my practice, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. and, but you tell your clients a lot that it's, and you've said a lot, I believe, that it's important for families to attend grief support. So can you tell our listeners why? Yes, it is very important. Um, so everybody grieves in their own way. Um, we're all individual people. We all do things differently. We all do things in different orders, right? And so there's no right or wrong way to grieve. And the grieving process, um, especially in a death, can happen before that death even occurs. Um, so family members are all going to be at different stages in the grieving process, um, even at the point of death. Um, the, the caregivers that are very close, they may start their grieving process a lot earlier. Um, so they may be a little bit further in the grieving process than, um, you know, more of a distant family member or a close friend who may start that grieving process um, in the last days or in the last hours um, of the loved one, right? And so a grief support group is going to sort of bring everybody together and, and you're going to hear different stories from different folks and you're going to realize that, you know, some people are going to cry. Some people are very introverted. Some people want to yell and scream. Everybody does it differently and that's okay. Um, but a, a grief support group is just going to show you that, no matter what form of grieving is your form, it's the right form for you. And it's going to slowly walk you through that process. Um, so if you're at stage one, it's going to slowly get you to where you need to be um, in a very healthy form, right? And you're going to have people supporting you, not only your family, but different folks who are maybe going through that same process as you are. Um, so, so the support groups are very, 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 very healthy to attend. And so that's always good because I, I sometimes think that people don't think they need it afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times I've seen clients a year later and they still don't seem like they're doing well when their parents have passed away, mm -hmm. you know, so I think it's really is really is important to do. So, but what would you say to a caregiver who says, I just want to move on. I'm okay. You know, cause I'm pretty sure, you know, most of us have said that over time. <laughs> and so what, what I've personally learned is the people who say that are usually the ones who need the most support. Um, sometimes, and I, and you know what? I can be one of those people also. You know, I'm fine. I'm okay. I, I got this. Um, and sometimes those people are kind of the most closed off and they just, they just want to get it out of their mind, but they don't allow themselves to grieve. Um, and so that's almost their form of trying to just grieve and get it over with. Um, so... Sometimes there aren't words for those folks. Um, sometimes it's just, they might just need somebody to sit with them. Um, just somebody to be there. Um, but but oftentimes uh, we do find that those people that say those types of things are the ones who may need the most support, um, just maybe in a different light and in a different way. And those are the people who also are gonna put themselves on the back burner. Um, after, after the death occurs, they're going to be worried about what everybody else is doing and is everybody else okay? Um, and then when they're approached, they're, I'm okay, I just need to move on, I'm fine. Um, but, but they're typically often the ones who are going to um, benefit most um, from a support group or from, from loved ones being around them. Our daytime caregiver was the longest person. Like she was there from the start, you know, with my grandparents. So she was probably there for, I don't know, well over a year and a half, I guess, maybe. And, um, you know, she became family. <laughs> so afterwards, you know, for a while afterwards, I'd call her to make sure she was okay, you know, because she was doing a lot of the day to day, Monday through Friday, you know, got very close to my grandparents. You know, so, um, you know, so I think it's important to to check in on those people that were the caregivers and, um, and just make sure they're doing fun things, you mm -hmm. know, so just getting them out, make sure they're not staying at home, making sure they're not. Because sometimes I think depression kind of kicks in, you know, as well. So, yep, you know, it certainly so. does. And those are the folks who 
we have to remind what the, what do you like to do? What do you want to do? What are the things that you forgot that you like to do? Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. definitely. So so how long should somebody attend a support group, a grief support group, if they're going to go? Is there a you know, sure? Um, like I said earlier, everybody's very different. Um, I know working for a hospice company, a lot of us will offer a bereavement coordinator for up to a year. Um, and like you said, you know, you can go past a year and still just not have a, a firm grip on what happened. And you just have, you're still having a hard time processing that. Right. So, um, and being that, like I said, everybody, every individual that's involved in that person's life is going to be at a different stage of grief. And so some folks may need to go for a few months. Some folks may need to go for well over a year. Um, it just depends on what stage you are in that grieving process and, um, you know, the closeness of that person and, and how well did you know them? There's so many factors that are going to play into how long you're going to want to attend that grief, that grief support. And maybe when maybe when you're through that grief support, you may still choose to go for a little while after because, you know, those closer knit grief support, they you get close with the people there. Um, and so you become like their family and you want to make sure they're okay. You know, so you become a good support system for those folks also. Um, so I would just say everybody's a little bit different. Um, some folks are going to want and need it a little bit longer than others. So now that we've told them, you know, they should go, you know, and uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes them. Um, tell them how does it, how does this grief support group help them? So it's gonna it's going to slowly walk them through the the, the grief journey, right? Um, it's gonna kind of walk them through those different stages of grief, and they're going to see other folks in those stages, right? Um, and so they're gonna find out that well, this is it's normal, right? It's it's normal to to have these feelings and. Um, if, if I want to yell and you want to cry, that's okay. <laughs> you know, if, if you need somebody to talk to for hours at end and I need somebody to sit next to me quietly and not say a word to me while I grieve, that's okay also. Um, so it's, it's going to help each individual understand that their grieving process is okay. Um, and maybe, maybe their grieving process is a little bit more, um, harder than a different grieving process. For example, um, as you mentioned earlier, some people do go into a depressive state, right? And so let's just say, you know, you're grieving and you're very depressed, right? Um, maybe not a healthy depressed, maybe not a healthy grieving depressed. Um, a support group is going to help you through that. Um, they're going to give you different, um, different tactics, different, um, different things to try. And you're going to have people that you can reach out to. Um, hey, I'm having a bad day today. Okay, what can we do to help you? Um, we want you to have that healthy, you know, that healthy grieving path. Um, sometimes we do veer off of that, but with the grief support group, it's a lot easier and a lot healthier to have somebody to reach out to, to say, hey, I'm having a bad day today. I, you know, yesterday was wonderful and good and I did really well, but today's really bad. Um, let, you know, call that person and, and have them bring you back to that right path and that healthy path of grieving um, so that we can stay through that healthy path and not and not veer to the unhealthy path of grieving. Well, that's very good advice. <laughs> so for sure. And so so how does someone find a good grief support group? So there's a lot of first of all, obviously, you know, when somebody passes away, um, typically they go through a funeral home. Um, and so funeral homes may have some resources for local um, grief support groups. Um, oftentimes, um, folks that pass away may, may or may, may not be on hospice care. Um, typically, hospice companies may have some grief support resources um, that the family can reach out to. I know that a lot of hospice companies do have bereavement services also that are free of charge um, for the families, um, as well as churches. Um, so a lot of, a lot of folks, um, it, it tends to make it easier to grieve if you, if you rely on your faith, right? Um, a lot of us believe myself included that I, I'm going to heaven when I pass away. Um, and so sometimes it's a little bit easier if you really open your heart and allow your faith to take over, um, 
but churches, you know, no matter where you go to church, um, they should have resources for that also. Um, and um, they may be able to actually help you through some of that, some of that grief also. So that's really good advice. So let's talk about your company. So if somebody wants to, you know, to find you, uh, do y'all offer some of these resources? We do. We do. Okay. Um, I assist in hosting a few different um, grief support groups um, throughout the Tomball Cypress area. Um, and um, we also, folks that are on our service, um, after somebody passes away, we do have a bereavement coordinator. Um, and, and we do offer bereavement services for up to one year for friends, family, or whoever, whoever may need it. Um, I have had phone calls from folks um, just in the general community reach out to me um, and ask about um, grief support groups, um, as well as a lot of senior living, uh, memory care communities, things like that. Um, they'll have folks call them as well um, and ask, hey, where can we get you know, some dementia support? Where can we get some grief support groups? Um, and so I like to make myself available as a resource to them also, um, because if I don't have one that's close in the area, I will find you one that you can attend. <laughs> I think the Alzheimer's Association has has mm -hmm. some of those as well. So they sure their, do. their website's probably a good resource too. So Yes, ma'am. All right, Becky, if somebody needs you, how do they find you? Sure. Uh, my cell phone number is 832-763-3795. Um, and they can, otherwise they can send me an email at Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A dot Davis, D-A-V-I-S at gentiva.com. That's G-E-N-T-I-V-A-H-S dot com. Perfect. And so I just want to thank you for being on the show today and I look forward to having you, you know, on the show again soon and, um, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for having me. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcasts as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.